असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोदय प्रत्योरमृतंगमय शांति 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 लेट इज ऑफर सल्यूटेशन टू लॉर्ड कृष्ण The embodiment of bliss, who came to establish dharma and punish the wicked. Let us pray to him to lead us from the unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. Lord Krishna's message in the Bhagavad Gita. running through 18 chapters is very significant lord krishna has given the solution to all our problems facing in our life problems will be there always as long as we are in this world you cannot escape from the problem you have to make solution to the problem solutions will be there every problem has a solution but how to find that solution there comes the application of our buddhi intellect so we must be bold enough to accept our weaknesses instead of nourishing them and try to overcome those weaknesses if you are full of temper get rid of temperament get rid of temper don't become angry you must find ways and means of controlling anger according to your own ways you can find out some people say in that angry mood don't simply jump to action leave the spot immediately there is one way another way is catch hold of a baby or child look at his face the anger will be reduced anyway many many methods will be there which you can adopt the point is you must control anger but people think when anger and the anger comes before the anger goes away i should do something they overact and whatever he does it will come back in different form you will also have to undergo the suffering of pain and misery same way greed gone acquiring wealth and wealth still there is no satisfaction keep on amassing the wealth blindly acquiring what by whatever means not krishna says in gita nyayena atta sanjaya by improper means by illegal means by cunning ways by crooked ways people earn money and they don't come to their senses unless they are caught but the root cause is greed so like that every quality has got its own dangers you have to be aware of them and be sincere in uprooting them so it means we have to control control your activities in a disciplined way
Lord Krishna says, is really impossible to have full control of any sense. As I said in the last class, nobody says don't take food, but don't be after food. In short, adapt a golden meal, Yuttahar Vivarasya, Yutta Cheshtasya Karmasu, Yutta Svapnava Bodhasya, Yogo Bhavati Dukkaha. Lord Krishna says, follow the golden mean path, golden paths in the evening. Golden path is prescribed for everybody. Be moderate in eating, drinking, sleeping, keeping awake and in enjoying the pleasures of the senses. What Krishna is telling, advising is, don't overdo. You need not deny yourself the pleasures of the senses completely, but anything in excess is harmful. Not only for spiritual advancement, but even for success in material life. So, Lord Krishna suggests moderation in life. If you are able to live a moderate life, that is the wonderful thing. By living a life of moderation, you will be unknowingly solving many problems in the life. So, when the senses are in very active mode, when the senses are full of energy, that's the time that you should control. Not when the senses have become weak. What is there to control? Because the senses have got so much energy, they have to be directed in a proper way. So directing all the senses towards spiritual activities should be done. So, there's a very important point that every one of us trying to practice spirituality. There is an instance in Swami Vivekananda's life. Once Swami Vivekananda while wandering in India, he came to Alwar, a place in Rajasthan. Wherever he would go, people would flock at him and Swamiji would give a lot of uh, inspiring words for the people to follow. It so happened once a very old man came there and he was asking Swamiji to give advice on realization. He was very old, please note that point. But he is asking advice about realization. Swamiji did not give any attention, he did not even look at him. In a way, he just ignored him. Two, three times the, this old man would come and approach Swamiji and put the same question more loudly. Still, Swamiji would not speak. And then that old man got disappointed and left the place, never to come back again. People who are there, they were puzzled. What is this? Why Swamiji did not give any attention to this old man seeking advice? So, they were very curious to know the answer. Why Swamiji did like that? Swamiji replied, Look, this old man, having spent all his energies 
in all sorts of uh, enjoying things of the world. All the senses have become degenerated. Now, what has you got to forsake to attain mukti? You must have something to do, something to forsake. So, what I did, I gave me shock treatment. Sometimes for the heart patients, they give shock treatment so that the heart becomes activated. For some people, not that all people, at least for some it acts upon. So, Swamiji said, he gave a kind of shock treatment to that fellow so that, see Swamiji was kind, but that kindness, who will understand? Only Swamiji could understand. Swamiji said, because of this shock treatment to him, he might start thinking, if not in this birth, he may improve at, at least in the next birth. So I am sowing the seed in him. But please note, everyone has to make one's own effort. Without making effort, you can't have any kind of uh, spiritual uh, inclination. So, it is individual effort. Everything is given. You have to follow it up. Thus, control now when you have something to control. Give up the clinging to the pleasures of the senses now when you have it. Because you can't give it up later when you have lost the capacity for enjoying it. People have the notion, Oh, let me enjoy now. Afterwards, let me see. This way of uh, postponing, procrastinating, it will not help in any manner. So, Lord Krishna says, Niyatam kuru karma, tvang karma, yayokya karmanaha, sharira yatra pitatena, prasidye da karmanaha. Do your duty. What Sri Krishna is telling is, no one can escape from karma. Everyone. Whether is a monk, whether is a householder, whether a poor man, whether a rich man, anybody, he has to engage himself in some kind of action. Nobody remains without an action, without action, even for a moment. But then, Sri Krishna says, transform, convert karma into karma yoga. That's the concept Sri Krishna gives in the third chapter. Convert karma into karma yoga. It is possible only when you have spiritual attitude. That means you should know what exactly spiritual attitude means and you must have tremendous faith in the Assurances given by Lord Krishna. Now this I am dwelling in everyone's heart. Hold on to Him, surrender to Him, and conduct your activities sincerely, honestly, without being hypocrite or cunning. But it is true that we make mistakes while doing karma. But God is so great, He forgives our mistakes. Because the lesson is, through mistakes we learn. Suppose you burn a finger in the fire, next moment, next time onwards you won't put your finger in the fire anymore. You will be more careful. So, that is called niyatam. Acting thus is better than inactivity. You can't even live for a short while if you are completely and literally inactive. Here, 
Nema means Sabhava Niyata or Prakriti Niyata according to the innate nature and mental makeup. Everyone's mental makeup is different. Whatever work you do in accordance with your nature and mental makeup is Niyata Karma. Do it with devotion and dedication and offering it to the Lord. God will accept. God is the eternal witness. He witnesses everything. Even we, not, we may not be conscious of what we are doing many times, but God knows what we are doing. So, whatever work we are engaged in, if we know what Vedanta is, we should regulate ourselves in a Vedantic way. Sri Krishna says, Sarvadharman Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Raja Ahamtva Sarvapapedhyo Mokshishyami Mahasucha Lord Krishna also gives a solution and he tells vehemently relinquish all types of dharmas just take refuge in me. The infinite self seated within you as your own self. So he is telling here to take refuge in him. That means to take refuge is not so easy as we think. But it is not difficult if we practice it. Saranagati, surrendering to the Divine, means the ego should be properly subdued. That is, you should, not, you should stop boasting yourself and making a showy way. No showy business. A person who is spiritual is completely silent. It doesn't broadcast in the TV, radio station. It's all nonsense. Please the God. Don't try to please the people. Hold on to truth and practice. Surrender to Him. By surrendering your ego, your devotion becomes perfect and followed by moral and ethical principles. If you conduct activities, Surely, undoubtedly, they will purify your mind which paves the way for spiritual background. When the mind is purified, you are very near to spiritual perfection. So, do the work in which you are engaged as best as possible with a spirit of detachment to the result. That means, result will come, but concentrate on doing the work properly. Don't complain about your circumstances and surroundings. They have been ordered by your past karmas. Instead of complaining, change your attitude towards that very work you find mental pain in doing. Till today you were thinking, I am working in this office because I have no other go. I need money. I receive a salary to support my family. But from now on, your attitude must be, in this infinite machine called the world, I am one cog. Somebody or other is going to benefit by my work. Whether I work in this office or another, when I look at it from the infinite angle, it is all for the world. So let me do my work properly, without diverting my attention to the result. If you work so, with a clear and clean mind, without hatred and aversion, understand 
that the divine expression will be in your work. Lord Krishna says, Idaf pravartir bhutanam yena saromidam tatam svakarmana tamabhyarcha siddhim vindati manavaha The infinite power from which everything has emanated is within, without. He is permeating and transcending everything. Man attains perfection by worshipping that power through doing his own duty as karma yoga. The capacity of the karmendriyas to work, the mind to feel and the intellect to think are all expressions of the infinite power. Brahman, that is that infinite power. Not only that, since the infinite power is everywhere, it is also in everyone whom you come in contact with. In also the very process of doing your karma. So, doing the work without hatred and aversion, attachment to the fruit, is really worship of the infinite. You can worship the infinite by your actions in the house, marketplace, or in the office, wherever you may be. Bring about the inner change in whatever work you may be doing. The potential force of our past karmas brings about the circumstances in which we are placed in this life. Our very nature is regulated and controlled by the unspent force of our past actions. So, be in it and yet try to be out of it through Karma Yoga. So Arjun, Lord Krishna says, your nature has been molded by your past karmas. You are a Kshatriya belonging to the warrior race, out and out. So, the action you are best fitted for is fighting for a righteous cause. It is your bounden duty, niyata karma. So do the very karma you are best fitted for as a karma yogi. Don't think that you can have knowledge if you run away from action. Your niyata karma, action according to your nature, is not only better than inaction, but it can also lead you to mukti, moksha, if done as karma yoga. You will have no sin coming from it. Ignartat karmanon yatra lokoyam karma bandhanaha tadatthan karma kaunteya mukta sangas samachara. You will not be able to maintain your body, that means life, even for a short time if you are completely, literally inactive. Not physical activity alone, but any movement is action. Thoughts being movements on the subconsciousness, even thinking is action. So, strictly speaking, you should not even think. Real jnana is annihilation of the mind. For once the mind is annihilated, that is, flow of thoughts, you are directly face to face with pure consciousness. Satchidananda. Manaso bhidayo nasho mano nasho mahodeya yamano nasho abhyeti mano jnasya hi shrinkhala says the Yoga Vasishta a great scripture. The very coming into existence of the mind is real destruction. For along with the mind, happiness and misery also come and we are ever agitated and tossed about by our emotions and thoughts. The real glory is in annihilating the mind. The chain that binds us is ignorance. The links of this chain can be broken through equanimity and karma yoga. The mind will then be less agitated. Such a mind alone can meditate and attain liberation. A jnanish mind dies. So Arjun, instead of coming, instead of committing suicide with the body by complete inactivity, use the body as an instrument for evolution. With the body alone can you do your dharma, karma yoga, 
and through this alone can you attain moksha tasman asaktaha satatam karyam karma samachara asakto hyacharan karma paramaapnoti purushaha so arjun do your duty that you might even otherwise have performed you did not invite the fight it was forced upon you your duty as a kshatriya is to protect dharma and destroy adharma from whatever source it emanates here the source of adharma is your own cousin and his brothers and in fighting against them you will have to kill some of your near and dear ones but you should not try to avoid it because it is distasteful you should not leave the present sphere of activity because it is an unpleasant one and seems to be full of defects remaining in it simply change the color of your actions by changing your attitude towards them whatever actions come your way whatever duties you have to perform do them to the best of your ability without attachment either to the result of the action or to your body mind and ego any individual who can thus perform his actions without attachment is can definitely reach the divine supreme tasmat asaktah satam karyam karma samachara whenever you have any doubt this is the mantra for you have equanimity go beyond misery and happiness rid yourself of ragat desh attachment and selfishness do the work before you the best way you can and be detached from the resolve be honest in all your dealings don't be afraid of any one even if it costs you your job don't resort to falsehood even supposing that be being honest you lose your job be absolutely certain that a better job is waiting extending its hands to you lord krishna assures partha naivega namutra vinashastasya vidyate nai kalyan krit kasti durgatim tada gachadi a person who goes through the right and noble path will never come to any difficulty nor has he any peril here in this world or hereafter kshipram bhavati dharmaatma shashvachanti nigachati kaunteya pratijanehi name bhakta pranashyati my real devotee will never perish krishna assures a person truly devoted to me will never perish moreover he will become a noble soul immediately and attain that permanent peace at once whenever you have any doubt you need not go running here and there asking for other people's advice just keep quiet your heart will advise you what it says may not seem to you the correct thing at the moment but act upon it subsequent events will justify your action kalidasa the great kavi the great poet he says satam hi sandeha pateshu vastushu pramana mantakkana pravrtayah noble and meritorious people when they have any doubts about anything do not consult books or other people they consult their own within whatever indication comes from their own inner being will be the right answer and to be this is how great people act this is how each and every person who is following dharma should act thus when krishna pointed out the path of karma yoga arjun wants to ask him whether anyone in the world has actually attained liberation without relinquishing activity by doing karma yoga krishna senses this question in the mind of arjun and he answers karmanai vihi samsiddhim astita janakadayah lokasangrame vaapi sampashyan kartumarasi arjun king janaka and others like him who had much heavier responsibilities than you are having attain liberation without relinquishing activity doing their duties as karma yogis they attain the supreme even if you look from the point of view of lokasangraha that is good of the world you should keep on acting in the world as a karma yogi lokasangraha that is doing doing good of the world is not something that is the sole concern of politicians and the government each and every one can do his bit how 
if you are a perfect karma yogi equipoised in samabhav you become a symbol example for others to emulate that way you can spread goodness around you if you can win over this soul and turn him to the path of liberation then you are doing the greatest loka sangraha when you start on this path relatives and friends may criticize you ridicule you and may try to pull you back to the world to all level everyone around you may try to make you the old fool again but be firm once they realize that you are really sincere and serious they will slowly start following you gradually they will also evolve this is the greatest good we can do to the world shri krishna tells arjun even supposing you have no desire to do karma and have nothing to gain by engaging in action if you consider the welfare of the masses you must go on acting in the world yadyadasarati sheshtastat deve krodhanah sayat pramanam kurute lokas tadanu vartate what a man of greatness and nobility does the lesser men will also do they imitate him they will take him to be an example for them to emulate when a man has come to into prominence for chivalry courage and skill in archery people look upon you as an example to be followed if you run away now what will the people think they will not understand your change of heart but mistaking it to be cowardice will themselves be demoralized and will run away from the battlefield will that be loka sangraha will that be for good of the world you are so placed that whatever you set up as a standard will be followed by the people it is your duty now to set up the right example fight on as a karma yogi with a equanimity and detachment teach them karma yoga theoretically and practically by your actions this advice lord krishna which he has given to arjun applies not only to him but to each and every one of us each of us is looked up to by someone or other if you are a father or a mother the children look upon you if you are a master the servant looks up to you you have a duty not only to yourself but to those around you also you must act in the world in such a way that you set an example for those around you to follow you can see how people set either good or bad examples by number of incidents in your daily life for example if the officer in charge of a department comes to the office at 11 o'clock every day you can be sure the staff gets there not a minute earlier than 10:55 if the officer leaves at 3 pm the office is empty at 3:05 if the head of a family spends his time playing cards is it any wonder that the children excel at cards and gambling rather than in the studies every father and mother want their children to study well and become excellent in every field but how many of them realize that they themselves are to blame if the children do not turn out well and the mother spends all her time in idle gossip neglecting even her household duties when the father wastes his time playing cards gambling and in such other activities and when both of them dislike intensely being bothered by the children how can the children learn good habits how can they expect the children to be studious when the parents have poor reading habits the mother confining her reading to some cheap magazines and the father to his daily newspaper is it not the responsibility of every father and mother to set good examples to the children by their very behavior be ethically perfect cultivate good habits utilize your spare time in reading good books on vedanta and other sacred scriptures spend some time each day teaching your children the fundamentals of dharma and telling moral stories to illustrate your point let your very life be a lesson to the children on vedanta if you do that you will be radiating ananda joy around you and the children will start imbibing your good qualities you will then see that not only do your children become very good but your own spiritual development will be very rapid the same applies in a wider sense to the national and political fields mahatma gandhi ji who lived for truth and non-violence could uplift the whole nation from lethargy and disunity 
and cut us under its bondage of ignominious slavery. Could he have done that if he had not lived what he preached? His very life was a dedication to the cause, and people were not slow to follow him with enthusiasm. If there are a dozen such great people in a country, that country will be a veritable paradise, for the people cannot but admire and follow their examples. Abito Brahma Nirvanam Vartate Vintatmanam Their perfection and jnana will be overflowing around them. There is none in the world who does not want to improve. Goodness is as contagious as badness. So as Sri Ramakrishna used to say, maintain satsang. Satsang, holy company. Sometimes you will not be able to get good company. The books are the books will substitute for company. They are the most wonderful, inspiring books are there to study. Engage in proper study of the books. Engage yourself in spiritual activities more vigorously, more willingly and try to conduct activities with great care and attention. Certainly, everyone can go forward in the spiritual path. Let us stop here. Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhi Tamastoma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat May the Lord protect us, may nourish us, May our knowledge be fruitful and enlightened. May we not hate each other. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.